The polar bear is a marine mammal because it spends many months of the year at sea. However, it is the only living marine mammal with powerful, large limbs and feet that allow them to cover kilometers on foot and run on land. Its preferred habitat is the annual sea ice covering the waters over the continental shelf and the Arctic inter-island archipelagos. These areas, known as the Arctic Ring of Life, have high biological productivity in comparison to the deep waters of the high Arctic. The polar bear tends to frequent areas where sea ice meets water, such as polynias and leads, to hunt the seals that make up most of its diet. Freshwater is limited in these environments because it is either locked up in snow or saline. Polar bears are able to produce water through the metabolism of fats found in seal blubber, and are therefore found primarily along the perimeter of the polar ice pack, rather than in the polar basin close to the North Pole where the density of seals is low. The key danger posed by climate change is malnutrition or starvation due to habitat loss. Polar bears hunt seals from a platform of sea ice. Rising temperatures cause the sea ice to melt earlier in the year, driving the bears to shore before they have built sufficient fat reserves to survive the period of scarce food in the late summer and early fall. Reduction in sea ice cover also forces bears to swim longer distances, which further depletes their energy stores and occasionally leads to drowning. Thinner sea ice tends to deform more easily, which appears to make it more difficult for polar bears to access seals. In addition to creating nutritional stress, a warming climate is expected to affect various other aspects of polar bear life. Changes in sea ice affect the ability of pregnant females to build suitable maternity dens. Polar bears accumulate high levels of persistent organic pollutants such as polychlorinated biphenyl and chlorinated pesticides. Due to their position at the top of the ecological pyramid, with a diet heavy in blubber in which halocarbons concentrate, their bodies are among the most contaminated of Arctic mammals. The rusty-patched bumblebee is important to the agricultural industry. This species pollinates up to 65 different genera of plants, and is the primary pollinator of key food crops, such as cranberries, plums, apples, onions, and alfalfa. These crops are important for day-to-day -day consumption by humans, but are also vital to sustaining birds and mammals that feed on their fruit. Its numbers have declined in 87% of its historical habitat range. On January 2017, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service placed the bee on the list of endangered species, making the rusty-patched bumblebee the first bee to be added to the list in the continental United States. Primary causes of mortality of the black-footed ferret include habitat loss, human-introduced diseases, and indirect poisoning from prairie dog control measures. Given an obligate dependence of black-footed ferrets on prairie dogs, black-footed ferrets are extremely vulnerable to prairie dog habitat loss. Habitat loss results from agriculture, livestock use, and other development. They are fatally susceptible to canine distemper virus, introduced animals like common raccoons or red foxes. A short-term vaccine for canine distemper is available for captive black-footed ferrets, but no protection is available for young born in the wild. Black-footed ferrets are also susceptible to rabies, tularemia, and human influenza. Oil and natural gas exploration and extraction can have detrimental impacts on prairie dogs and black-footed ferrets. Seismic activity collapses prairie dog burrows. Other problems include potential leaks and spills, increased roads and fences, increased vehicle traffic and human presence, and an increased number of raptor perching sites on power poles. The red wolf is a canine native to the southeastern United States which has a reddish tawny color to its fur. Morphologically it is intermediate between the coyote and gray wolf, and is very closely related to the eastern wolf of eastern Canada. 
the red wolf's proper taxonomic classification. In essence, whether it is an admixture of wolf and coyote or a third, distinct species, has been contentious for well over a century and is still under debate. Because of this, it is sometimes excluded from endangered species lists despite its critically low numbers. Coral pink sand dunes tiger beetle is a species of tiger beetle endemic to Coral Pink Sand Dunes State Park in southern Utah. Rainfall is the primary factor controlling the population of the beetle, and drought is the most severe threat to the species. Off-road vehicle activity has degraded the beetle's habitat, particularly the interdunal swales, which are the habitat where most larvae are found. Vegetation. Damaged by off-road vehicles can lead to degraded larval habitat and reduced prey abundance. The delta green ground beetle plays a useful role in its ecosystem by pollinating plants, fruits, and vegetables. Its color is a metallic green, usually with bronze spots on its elytra, though some lack these spots. The lack or reduction of circular pits on the elytra helps distinguish it from other ground beetles. The destruction of vernal pool habitats in California is largely the result of agricultural development, though urbanization and grazing have played some role in their elimination. Another significant threat to the beetle is the introduced garden lipia, which grows in dense mats in these habitats and impairs its ability to forage. The Wyist's primrose sphinx is a species of moth found in western United States. The habitat consists of sand washes and prairie blowouts. There is one generation per year with adults on wing from May to June. Adults nectar at flowers during the day. The Santa Catalina rattlesnake is a species of venomous pit viper endemic to Isla Santa Catalina in the Gulf of California. A relatively small and slender species, its most distinctive characteristic is that it lacks a rattle. It is threatened due to collecting and the introduction of alien predator species, such as feral cats. While most members of this genus are almost entirely terrestrial due to their heavy body structure, this species' small size makes it a swift and skillful climber. Previous researchers hypothesized that the ability of the Santa Catalina rattlesnake to climb, combined with its lack of a rattle allowed it to hunt roosting birds, but detailed research into the species diet has revealed that the Santa Catalina rattlesnake maintains a mammal-based diet like most rattlesnakes. When in flight, condors move remarkably gracefully. The lack of a large sternum to anchor their correspondingly large flight muscles restricts them to being primarily soarers. It is thought that in the early days of its existence as a species, the California condor lived off the carcasses of the megafauna, which are now extinct in North America. They still prefer to feast on large, terrestrial mammalian carcasses. Condor numbers dramatically declined in the 20th century due to poaching, lead poisoning, and habitat destruction. 
A conservation plan was put in place by the United States government that led to the capture of all the remaining wild condors which was completed in 1987, with a total population of 27 individuals. The San Quintin kangaroo rat lives in a burrow with several entrances, none of which is usually concealed under shrubs. The burrow can be 50 centimeters deep with a main passage and several side passages, and has about three nesting chambers and ten food storage chambers. The diet of this kangaroo rat is probably seeds and green shoots. This animal is nocturnal, and young have been seen at several different times of year, but mainly in the winter and spring. The whole area which they inhabited has been converted into agricultural land. The colonies have disappeared, and intensive searches in the 1990s failed to detect any specimens. Bert's deer mouse is a species of rodent in the family Chrysididae. It is endemic Montserrat Island off the east coast of Baja California Sur. The species is threatened by predation by feral cats. The San Jose brush rabbit becomes reproductively active in November. Being crepuscular the rabbit is most active from sunset and at dawn. The San Jose Island is home to one of the most diverse mammalian populations of off-islands in Baja California. Areas on the island rich in the plants. The species is listed as critically endangered due primarily to predation by feral cats, and are also affected by habitat loss, human developments and rats and hunting which have all led to population declines since 1995-1996. To preserve the species it has been recommended that the feral cats be removed and further research be conducted. Although protected under Mexican law they are commonly poached by hunters legally hunting invasive goat species. The Baja California pronghorn was the last subspecies of pronghorn to be described, and is found on the Baja Peninsula. The recovery for the Baja California pronghorn is affected by many different factors. Like most pronghorn species, adequate nutrition is crucial for survival, but not uniquely to the Baja California pronghorn, human population increase and land development have drastically reduced their habitat. This creates barriers that do not allow genetic diversity and reduce the total area these animals can use to forage for food and find water. Conservation efforts must be conducted to save the habitat of the species. These can include stopping development in the current ranges of the Baja California pronghorn and reducing the number of males in the population, which will allow more genetic diversity and open up more habitat for females that are the key to recovery of the population. The vaquita, literally, little cow, is a species of porpoise endemic to the northern end of the Gulf of California. Averaging 150 centimeters, it is the smallest of all living cetaceans. Today, the species is on the brink of extinction. Recent research estimates the population at fewer than 19 individuals. The steep decline in abundance is primarily due to bycatch in gillnets from the illegal totoaba fishery. Vaquitas are generalists, foraging on a variety of demersal fish species, crustaceans, and squids. Little is known about the life history of this species. Life expectancy is estimated at about 20 years and age of sexual maturity is somewhere between 3 and 6 years of age. Given their proximity to the coast, vaquitas are exposed to habitat alteration and pollution from runoff. There is no evidence, however, that these threats have made any significant contribution to their decline. Bycatch is the single biggest threat to the survival of the few remaining vaquita. <laughs>